Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch. Today we're looking at a very interesting tool that is currently under development, getting new features all the time, including a 0.6 release, what was just released a couple of days ago. And what we are looking at today is called Pixel Over. Here we are on their website. Uh, you'll see it's available at pixelover.io. This is commercial software, one of those things to be aware of right up front, but there is a fully functioning trial. That's actually what I'm using today. The only limitation is it can't export. So if you wanna go ahead and check this out yourself, there is a download available. And if you look at that user interface, you may be thinking to yourself, that looks kind of familiar. And yes, this is yet another piece of software that is built on top of the Godot game engine. So we're going to take a look at Pixel Over right now. And here is it. Now, originally, this one was all about uh, basically creating pixel art from an image. There's a couple of tools out there that do this, including other Photoshop tools. And we're going to take a look at that in the process. But this thing keeps getting more and more features. For example, it now has bone animation. As you can see right here from this character, uh, you can create pixel art and then you can actually apply bones to it, transformation to those bones and animate it accordingly. Another thing about this thing is it's a scene composition. So you can actually bring in a number of different images here. And the cool thing here is if I grab the canvas, I can actually rescale the entire thing and it will scale it up and down accordingly. And here you can see, again, bone animations. You can create multiple animations here. Uh, so idle, idle special, or flipping between the two animations. You can set uh, keys over time in your animation. So this thing can also do, uh, as you can see, this kind of animated work. You can also animate anything based off of its position and so on. In terms of exporting out, well, if you have the full version, you have the ability to export out as either an animated GIF or a PNG. And your PNG can either be a sequence of images or as a sprite sheet ready to use in whatever your game engine of choice is. Now, the part that this was originally created for was to do that pixel art uh, trick. Transformation. So we're going to see that process instead. You can actually uh, do this by simply dragging and dropping an image into the application. As you see, we've got a tabbed interface, so uh, you can work on multiple projects at the same time. Uh, once that guy is imported, we can go ahead and do things, obviously, like resize the canvas. I can have it lock or unlock. So if we want to do something lower polygon, we can do so like so. Now, a lot of what you're going to probably do with this, something like this, is to do... Um, again, that pixel art conversion. You can see here up in the shader category, we can apply a number of different shaders to it. So for example, I could do Sweetie and then we'll go ahead and apply it. And there you can see we've got a more pixel arty look. Now with that guy having created, we can actually come up here, press this guy, the compare tool, and you can do a side-by-side -side split. Pixel art, not pixel art. So you can actually see the effects of your pixel art. Now the cool thing here is you also have full control over all the parameters of your shader. So if you want, you want to add a tint to this guy, uh, we could do so. It's a pretty drastic tint, but uh, we've got the ability to add a modulate color there. Um, it goes back to white, so turn that off. Uh, you can change out the hue. You can change out the brightness, uh, contrast, saturation, gamma, and so on. Uh, also, by the way, there is undo support, so you can go back to where you started at. I think I just actually undid my uh, shader, so we'll, we'll do a different shader this time. So let's go ahead and do Sweetie Plus. Go ahead and apply it. So as you see, you have multiple shaders that you can apply. Uh, you have control over other things. So for example, if you are using a fixed palette in your game, you can do an index palette and you can actually see the colors that are in use there. You also have the ability to import uh, from a file. So if you have your own, um, you could import in the pixel uh, palette from another. So if you're trying to keep a consistent pixel art uh, kind of look, you can. Uh, I believe you can also go ahead and edit. So you can see the effect of it changing that indexed value right there. So if you want to make small changes to the palette of the indexing, uh, you can directly edit them right there. Uh, you've got masking on and off. Uh, so you can add a mask palette in. I'm going to skip that because I don't actually know how to use it. So let's get rid of masking. Uh, you can dither the image. Like so. Basically get fine-tuned control over how it looks. So if you want to get a bit more of that, uh, I don't know, rasterized look, you can do that there. Uh, you can generate an outline if you so wish. All right, why am I not actually getting? Oh, I need to have a transparent image. So I'm not going to see it on this particular example because I actually have a background. But if you had an alpha channel here, your outline would trace around the outside edge of it. Um, you got the ability to denoise. So if you want to change out the amount of noise in the scene, you can do so like so. And you get a very blurry result. You got control over how it is done. Uh, so if you want to create and, and take like a normal standardized image and then pixel art assize it, uh, you can do so right here. Of course, we've got the ability to, to deform it, to transform it, and so on. Uh, and you can deform uh, independently, so it doesn't have to be uh, this way. Uh, coincidentally, you can also drag multiple images into the scene. So for example, I'll come here, look at one of their other examples. Uh, 
flamethrower shirt. Here we go. Uh, you're gonna see here we have the, the character here, but we also have another image that's brought in, the flame effect. And then you can see here in this animation, you also see that they're, they're changing the color over time. That all can be uh, handled with different keyframes. So you can see down here, the keyframes that are being handled, the color is being keyframed right there. Uh, in the default shader, and then here in the one character, things are being, uh, the deformations are being uh, keyframed, and here the animation frames and transformations of the flame itself are being uh, handled as well. Um, so yeah, that is kind of it. Uh, so if you're interested in checking this one out, a couple other features available here, you can turn uh, grid on and off, uh, you can show a checkered background or not. Uh, yep, and then up here you can do uh, arbitrary deformations, and I think I need to select something specific here. Let me go back to my captain. And I could go, and we can do page curl effects, warp things, change things around that way. Um, yeah, so that's kind of the idea behind it. And transform is gonna transform the entire canvas as opposed to the individual element. Uh, and that, again, is uh, pixel over. So we're going to take a look at the website for a second, get an idea of what the features and functionality is, what the cost is, and so on. Uh, so you can see this is software under uh, development. So the point two release added the transforms we just saw. Three added scene composition, allows you to bring multiple images into the same scene. Four gave you the keyframe animation. Five is adding shapes and effects. I never actually showed you that, but this is actually kind of cool. Another one of their examples here is here. So you can see shapes and effects in action. Uh, and we'll go ahead so you can see the composition of this scene. It's pretty straightforward. Three sets of water. And then down here we've got uh, a shockwave effect being applied that's uh, available down here. Water and shockwave effects are available and can be keyframed as you can see. And then we'll just go ahead and play that. And there you see the results. And you can create animated water uh, using this setup. So that was something new that was added in point five, and then point six added uh, the addition of uh, the bone animation and trails. And coming soon, there is going to be 3D support. It'd be interesting to see how that shows up. In terms of features and functionality, as we saw, most of these things indexing to a fixed palette, uh, dithering options. Uh, you can make adjustments to the color, hue, and saturation, and so on. Uh, you can do lines. Uh, we didn't show them because I didn't bring in a transparent image, but if you want, you can trace around the outside edge in multiple different colors. Uh, scenes, you've got uh, child-parent relationships. So if you parent an image to another image, it will move when you move the topmost image. You've got transformation deformations, copy and paste, uh, and multiple layers available. Also, there is undo support and redo support. Uh, import uh, sprite sheets, GIFs, or animated images. This is how they saw the flame in that one animation effect. Uh, so you could bring in an animated sprite sheet to work with this. You can now create bones and animations, uh, keyframe animation over time. It is available for Windows, Mac, and Linux. As you can see, it is $19.20 hosted up on itch.io. Available here. So if you're interested, check them out. By the way, that is USD. Uh, it is one of those programs you're kind of buying for the future. It's getting more and more features over time. Uh, as I mentioned earlier on, it is actually built on top of the Godot game engine. Uh, it's pr pretty obvious in the, uh, in the user interface. It's just worked flawlessly for me. It works fine on high DPI displays, which is actually kind of impressive. And the most recent release here was just two days ago with the 0.6 where they added bones and trails. Uh, so you can see the bone animations and here you can see trails in effect. So it's kind of like a blur effect as the sword swings. So you see, and this thing is getting more and more features and functionality as time goes on. Uh, yeah, so that's that's kind of it. That, that's what's new in this particular release. Uh, it's, it's an interesting project for sure. Uh, definitely, if you want to check it out, again, it is available at pixelover.io, available for a number of different platforms. Uh, let me know what you think of this tool. Uh, I know there are a number of tools on the market that um, do this pixelization stuff for you, uh, but this one actually does a pretty good job of it, especially if you are working with a fixed color palette. I'm impressed by that aspect of it. Is it worth the money? Well, money is always incredibly relative. And again, you're kind of getting this one for future potential, or you could hold on, wait, see what kind of comes with it. I'd be interested to see what 3D ultimately means on it. Uh, they do do, uh, do, do uh, developer blogs though. So if you're interested, we do have a roadmap of the features and functionalities they are looking to add uh, coming up. So, uh, but it's, it's kind of import 3D models and manage 3D scene with saved presets. 
It's kind of vague exactly what that means. It, I don't know if it'll just basically take in a 3D model and render it to a sprite, which in and of itself is a useful feature, but it'll be interesting to see what that feature turns into. But as it stands, that there is Pixel Over, available at pixelover.io. Let me know what you think. Comments down below, and I'll talk to you all later. Goodbye.